What's up everybody, CHM Carnivores here and I hope you're having a wonderful day and a wonderful week. Now today is an extra special video, something that I wish was something that was put together when I first got started in the business and we're gonna talk today specifically about what good looks like for your plants and then we're also gonna identify all the things that could potentially be wrong with your plants. This is gonna be a comprehensive guide that is gonna go through everything that you need to know in order to ensure that your plants are healthy, to be able to look at your plants and tell that they're healthy and then how to identify when there's something wrong and what that problem will be. A lot to cover. This is probably the most important video that I've made to date. This will save you a lot of time, a lot of headache in the long run and ensure your success. Stick around. All right, everybody, as I said in the introduction, this is probably the most important video that I have made to date. Uh, this is going to be a comprehensive guide of everything that you need to know uh, to ensure that your plants are healthy, what unhealthy plants look like, what type of unhealthy it is, how to identify it between the two different types of, or several different types of what's going on. Is it oedema? Is it, um, is it fungus? All those little tiny nuances. I'm gonna to try to keep it short and sweet, but I will tell you that you will be doing yourself a favor to watch this video in its entirety because it's going to cover everything you need to know as you grow these plants. So think of it as sort of an encyclopedia to be able to tell whether or not your plants are feel, feeling good and are growing well for you. So um, in the Nepenthes world, it seems like there's a lot of guessing games. There isn't a whole lot of information comparative to other plants out there on Nepenthes. And I have found it to be very restrictive as far as the information goes. And I've had to figure out a lot of things uh, as I go. So what I thought I would do is provide a comprehensive guide to you so that you aren't in the same position that I was in when I first started growing them. And frankly, what I find myself still in position as I'm learning new things. So I've got a lot to cover here. I'm gonna to try to keep it uh, in respect of your time as short as possible, but I'm gonna tell you uh, this is a extremely important uh, video and I certainly hope that you get a lot out of it. So first off, what does normal look like? So the first thing you wanna do whenever growing an Nepenthes is figure out what normal looks like. And the way you're gonna do that is figure out what kind of species you have and what kind of hybrid you have. What are the different species that they, uh, they are in, in situ or in the wild? What do they do? For instance, Peltata has red leaves. So uh, where you might think it's getting too much light, it might just be a case of that's how the plant grows. And so you want to understand where these plants are coming from, what are their growth habits in the wild, and that will help you better understand not only what the plant should look like, but also what the requirements that plant should get. Now, a normal, healthy looking Nepenthes plant should have a good growth tip on it. Um, it should be, for the most part, green, other than some of your other varieties, like the leaves should be green. They should have a little bit of malleability to them, be able to bend a little bit, but not all species are like that. Truncata is gonna be a lot uh, stiffer leaf, and so you wanna understand those things. Um, the moss itself should be damp at all times uh, and not uh, soaking wet, and you wanna make sure that your plant has got, uh, the pictures are nicely formed. I'm gonna show you some that aren't, and I'm gonna tell you why that is, and then we'll go through all those things. So first and foremost, understand what you're growing, understand where they're coming from, understand what their growth habit looks like, and that will better prepare you for how you grow them. Um, so first and foremost, let's talk about not enough water. I've got myself a nice handy notebook this time because I wrote down a lot of things to cover and so I wanna make sure that I don't skip anything, hence the comprehensiveness. So not enough water takes on a couple different manifestations. One telltale sign is your, uh, your sphagnum moss is going to be dry crunchy to the touch. That is a good indication that your plant is not getting enough water. Now, as far as the actual plant, you'll start noticing things like the, the leaves on the edges will start to get floppy at first. So in sort, you know, a, a Nepenthes usually has like a paddle shape to it, depending on the, on the variety that you have. And it should, uh, it should be malleable, but it should keep that form, almost like a paddle looking form. If you start seeing those leaves curl in on the sides, that is because that is the first indicator that that plant is not getting enough moisture. And so that's your first key to look at that. We, in my last video, I showed you a Brigziana that was showing that little droop of the leaves. That's a good indication that it's stressed because it's not getting enough uh, water. Now, as far as 
uh, pictures go. I showed you in the other video my uh, Truncata Giant Hiroshima. You'll start to notice that the pitcher will start to underdevelop the lid, and so the lid will actually pop open before the pitcher is fully ready and fully developed. That is a clear classic sign of the uh, air or the humidity air in your uh, grow tent or in your home being too dry. And the way that you can get around that again is to spray those pitchers down and or use a humidifier in the direct vicinity in order to keep those pitchers moist. So if that lid is uh, prematurely opening and you can tell that as opposed to a pitcher that just opens on its own because the premature uh, lid will actually separate from the peristome and it won't be open so it'll be fully attached but there'll be a hole uh, between where the where the lid will be in the peristome as the plant or the pitcher keeps growing that is a clear sign that that lid or that pitcher rather got too dry and it is starting to open now some of the more long-term effects of not getting enough water you're going to start noticing crisping of the browning of the leaves on the edges so first they'll droop and then over time, they will start to dry up and crisp around the edges. It'll almost look like cold damage, but uh, if it's not cold, then you know you've got a different situation. And that's more uh, than likely because there's not enough humidity in the air. And so those uh, leaves will start to crisp around the edges. Now, let's talk about light, not enough light. Some varieties like uh, uh, Enigma wants to grow an extreme shade. So again, you need to understand what your plant likes and doesn't like. Something like the, um, oh goodness, I totally lost my train of thought here. The Stenophylla wants a lot of light and so does something like an Ime. So you wanna understand your plant, but how can you tell if your plant is not getting enough light? So first sign is that your tendrils aren't forming all the way. They'll, they'll start to form and then they'll turn black on you. That is usually a good indication that you're not getting enough light. Also, the leaves, for the most part, depending on the variety, the leaves should be a nice bright green. And if your leaves start to look um, pale and start to have almost like a um, uh, almost a yellowish uh, green, that means they are not getting enough light. They're not producing enough chlorophyll, and so that plant is begging you for more light. So that's also a good indication that it's not getting enough. This one could be a tough one to, to track down. Uh, normally it's the other way around where it's getting too much light, which we'll touch later in this video. But if you notice those two factors, uh, then you know that you've got a situation where you're not getting enough light. Now, as your plant starts to uh, vine out, you'll notice the vine is growing. And if it's, it's, if it's doing an extreme like whip to the left or right, it's trying to get to that light, you might wanna think about moving the plant over. So let's talk about fungus issues. Let's talk about fungus issues next. How can you tell if you've got fungus issues? So first thing to note, and we'll talk about oedema and too much water here in a little bit, is fungus will, will show itself, a uh, clear sign is you'll start getting brown spots all over your leaves. Now, it'll be different from oedema, and that is that the leaf, the brown spot, will be smooth to the touch, whereas oedema will feel bumpy and rigid um, and, and like I said, we'll talk about more what that looks like uh, when we get to the part about too much water. But as far as fungus goes, the most common fungus you're gonna get is a white powder fungus. And you'll be able to find that either on the stem of the plant, normally at the base, or that you will see it in the um, growth media on top. Now here's a clue, if you're starting to see it on top, there is a really, really high likelihood that it is all throughout the media. So whenever I see that, I go ahead and repot that media altogether. I do what's called a hard repot, which is we remove all the soil away right from the roots very carefully and, and uh, put fresh media on that. And you'll notice when you take it out of there, just like an iceberg, a lot of the trouble is underneath the surface and you'll start to see that fungus. And that fungus will get inside the plant and it will manifest more, uh, more so than not on the leaves. Now in extreme cases, it'll start impacting the growth tip uh, and making the growth tip grow kind of crazy and wonky. And, and, and in very extreme cases, will result in a, result in a uh, stem rot. But if you uh, find the telltale signs where you start seeing brown spots on your leaves that are not bumpy, that is a clear indication that you have got a fungus issue. The best way to treat that, take it out, hard repot it like I talked about, and then spray some neem oil on it. A couple of the applications ought to do it. Spray it on the leaves and on the top surface of your, um, your uh, media and you'll do just fine. Um, 
So that goes on to when to change the media. Again, I'm looking at my notes so that I don't skip anything. When to change your media. So the white fungus, perfect time to change your media. Very important that you do so and don't sit on that. The other times is if your media starts to break down. Now, sphagnum moss, long fiber, fiber sphagnum moss, hard to say, um, it looks like almost like um, wet strings of, of uh, really loose yarn, like the real fluffy yarn that you buy. Now you'll start to notice it'll start to degrade over time and get this almost like crumbly texture to it. That is a good indication that it is time to switch out that moss. Also, sphagnum moss should be nice and spongy to the touch with all that airflow in there. If you feel it and it's feeling nice and hard, you've got two issues uh, that could be happening. One is your plant is getting root rot, which, or excuse me, root bound, which is highly unlikely with Nepenthes as they are very epiphytic. Or two, you're starting to get a, dinner, a degeneration of the uh, media and it is time to change that out. It's very important that you do that and not ignore that because as that uh, media starts to degenerate, it starts to break down and it removes those air pockets that that sphagnum moss provides to give the air or the roots the proper airflow that they need. All right, so airflow is what we're gonna talk about next before we go on to that list, to the next page of that list. Airflow is very, very important. I've talked about this in multiple videos. This will make or break a lot of your plants depending on what varieties they are. Now, in order to ensure proper airflow, you do wanna have some sort of air circulation. I place fans in different corners of my grow tent, so it, it creates almost a cyclonic movement and gets around all the bases of the plants. Remove any dead leaves, this is what I do have a problem with. Remove the dead leaves uh, and remove the dead pictures. I do struggle with that, I don't get a lot of time to get in here, uh, but those dead leaves are one of the biggest culprits to ensuring that your plant will get stem rot because it does not get that airflow. Now, how do you know, going on now into stem rot, how do you know if your plant's not getting enough airflow? So a good indication of that is your plant will start to look sickly and the leaves will start to droop. Not so much at the corners, but they'll start to droop down all together and, almost, and just look like a sick plant. So they'll start to droop down around the sides and towards the ground. And so that is a good indication that that plant is very unhappy and it's time to change this the media, cut those dead leaves off of, off of there, put it in front of a fan and get it nice airflow. If in, in extreme situations you don't get it in time, it will develop what's called a stem rot. And so this is exactly like it sounds, the main uh, stem of the plant rots. It'll eventually work its way down from the tip growth tip down and if it gets into the roots, it will kill the plant. Now, the way to get around this is if you do develop stem rot in your plant, you will know the stem will turn black and uh, you'll notice a small, probably one inch spot at first. And it, over time, it only takes a couple days. So you gotta act fast. It will grow down and eventually kill your plant. Now, this is the tough decisions you have to make when you're an Nepenthes grower. The way that you get rid of that is to cut underneath the stem rot and you'll know you got it because inside the stem is an inner core and you'll see it when you do this hopefully you don't have to but when that inner core stops looking black and is nice and green you got it and you're all set it will set your plant back significantly but if you don't treat stem rot this way very very fast within a day or two you will lose that plant speaking from experience I've lost a leviathan of all things uh, because of that stem rot Raja hybrids tend to be very susceptible, susceptible to stem rot um, that I find. Um, I could be wrong, but that is what I have found in my experience. So let's talk about if your plant has too much water, what does that mean? And so again, this is where stem rot will manifest itself. Um, and so you'll get some indications before that. So what you wanna do, this is more of a preemptive measure on your plants. And so what I like to do is pick up the pot and feel it. now. A, a, a pot that has a, a damp media should feel light to the touch. If it feels extremely light, that plant is way too dry and needs to be changed. If you do pick up your pot and water drips out of the bottom, that plant is way too wet. And so you wanna make sure that you take care of that. If it seems to be dripping out way too much water, worst case scenario, give it a hard repot. Again, remove all that soil out of there and then uh, go ahead and replace your media. Now, one thing that's helped me, none of this is tried and true scientifically. I have not done any tests to prove this, but I have saved two plants from root rot by putting them in a dry 
peat moss instead of a sphagnum moss, and that seems to help. It, it worked with my spatulata merliana. Uh, I put it in that thing and kept it dry, so it sucked all that moisture out of those roots very, uh, very quickly, and it saved that plant. Now, again, this has not been backed by any sort of scientific data other than my experience, and it has worked. It is harder than you think for your Nepenthes to get stem rot, but it is possible. And again, you'll notice this very quickly as the plant will droop all the way down very, very quickly. Those leaves will get very dry and crispy looking. Uh, and then the, the, uh, the growth point itself will get very limp and fall over. And that is a good indication that that plant is in a lot of trouble. Unfortunately, with as thin as the roots are, it is very hard to bring a plant back uh, once it starts going down the stem, uh, the root rot uh, path. It will develop stem rot shortly after and then will uh, die on you, which is unfortunate. Now, there are preemptive measures to get away from that. One is to do the pot test, as I was talking about, picking it up. If it feels almost like air, way too dry. Uh, if it feels very heavy, it is way too wet. Now, the way you can get around this is make sure you put holes in your pots and increments. It doesn't really matter around the pot to provide for good aeration. Also use in your media with sphagnum moss, uh, perlite or, or cocoa core or something like that. Now, if you are gonna use a cocoa core, make sure that you, you uh, soak it before use because it's gonna have a lot of sodium in it and you wanna get those salts out of there so it does not kill your plant. So that's a, a good thing to do. Keep those roots aerated and to, and to ensure that they don't get that root rot. All right, so let's talk about too much light too much light. I made a video about this earlier. Um, this is a little bit easier to tell than others. Actually, no, back up real quick because we were just talking about too much water. I want to cover this before I forget. Odema. You will see odema a lot as a very, very common factor, especially with your more epiphytic plants like a truncata, like a Rob Cantlii, or any of their hybrids. You will start to see brown spots on the leaves. Now, this is how you can tell the difference between odema and a fungus spot. Odema is when the, the cells within the leaves fill up with too much water and they explode causing damage to the leaves and they will have a raised lesion on the leaf and so you'll be able to feel that. If you see it uh, from, from uh, the eye, uh, uh, mold, fungus, and uh, odema look very, very, very similar. To the touch, very different. You will feel those ridges and that will give you a sign. That is not uh, lethal to the plant um, but it will cause significant stunting of growth and pitcher production will slow down considerably. The way you treat that, simple, just go ahead and back off. But it's also a good indication to check your media to ensure that it is not getting too uh, wet. Okay, so too much light. I made a video about this. We talked about this in the past. Uh, too much light will manifest in several things. This is where you really need to understand what the, na the natural um, state of your plant is. If you have a Peltata hybrid, more likely than not, you're going to have redder leaves. And so that is not a leaf burn. And so if your plant starts to produce leaves that have a red tint to them instead of a green, that could be an indication or more than likely is an indication that they are getting too much light. In extreme cases, they will actually burn the leaf and it looks almost like a fungus where those brown spots, but instead of brown, it will almost have like a reddish tint to it. Uh, it seems like that would be hard to tell and, and, and dealing with minutia, but it is very easy to see. Leaf burn has a very clear red uh, spot as opposed to a brown and crispy spot. So let's talk now about cold damage, cold damage. So if you live in an area where the temperatures drop, that can be good for a lot of highland uh, hybrids and highland nepenthes but if it gets too cold, you wanna know what that damage looks like. And this can manifest in a lot of different ways. The first sign that you will see is your, your plant's leaves will start to look very unhappy and they'll start to get droopy. And very quickly after, just like if they're too dry, they will start to crisp on the edges of the leaves. Um, the difference is when they're too dry, they will normally stop at the edges of the leaves and stay that way for some time. If it's cold damage, that leaf, will turn black very quickly within a few days and you'll have a good indication along with the context that it was cold that you need to get some sort of heating element for your plant. Now let's talk about leaves. What are the leaves telling you? So a healthy leaf, so Nepenthes are considered sort of a semi woody vine and so it is healthy and natural for them to drop their leaves as they continue to grow. 
Now, normal a normal healthy dropping of the leaf, the leaf will start to turn brown and black. Usually it starts yellow, then goes brown and black from the tip of the leaf, tendril side, down to the stem. Don't worry, that's completely normal. If you start to see the leaf turning black from the stem, where it connects to the stem out to the exterior of the, of the leaf, that is when you need to watch out because that's usually a sign that there's too much water going on with your plant. And so keep an eye on that. If you see that happening, first thing you ought to do is check the media and make sure that it is not too wet. All right, last but not least, we've covered a lot of stuff in here. I told you this would be a lot. We're gonna talk about pest and pest damages and what that will look like to you, all right? So there are several different pests. Now, Nepenthes are uh, surprisingly very, very tolerant of um, pests and, and don't, don't normally get pests that will kill them off completely. It does happen. Your two biggest ones are mites and thrip. Thrip being the one that you will probably get the most. If you grow your plants outdoors, there is a high likelihood that you will get mites and mites are pretty easy to treat. There are several different varieties. There's one called a spider mite that will literally grow a spider web all over the plant and you'll see that and it's usually and where the leaf and the stem meet and there'll be little tiny looks what looks like spiders all over that thing now that can be treated with a pesticide uh, usually do organic like a captain jacks neem oil will work as well uh, there is a specific a particular mite you don't hear about often that actually gets into the tissues of the leaves those unfortunately are extremely hard to treat and sometimes you have to go to extreme lengths of dunking your plants in hot 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 water to kill them off but let's just not even go there until we need to deal with that now a sign of a mites is the plant will start wigging out. The growth tip sometimes will grow multiple growth points at once. It's doing everything it can to try to survive. It's almost like the mites in, um, in mess with the nervous system, if that was a thing. Uh, and so they just kind of go uh, wild and crazy and all the leaves will be very deformed. The growth tips will be growing down and it almost, it looks like a gnarly claw. Thrip on the other hand is very different. Thrip actually chews away the fibers within the leaf, so it'll cause malformations in your leaves. You will normally, you will not see a thrip. They are very small, unless you've got way better eyes than me. Um, but you will notice their, um, their evidence by the leaf. The leaf will start having these brown or black streaks all through them that are zigzagging. That's where the thrip has been eating. The leaf will start to malform because those tissues have been broken down. And then you'll just get these really gnarly leaves. Now, thrip loves, loves, loves new soft growth. So you wanna look there uh, and you can tell them they are lethal to a plant, but it will take a long time. So you do have time on that. The biggest thing that you wanna do with that is treat it with an insecticide like a Captain Jack's organic, spray it on the underside of the leaves, top sides of the leaves, all the plants around it, top of the media, try not to get it on the roots. In a couple applications of that, you'll be just fine and your plant will thank you for it. You've seen in my prior videos where they have grown just fine. All right, so this is a ton, a ton of information. I just wanna make sure I covered it all and it looks like I did. This is a lot, a lot of information, but it will set you up for success. If you follow this, feel free to pause and stop it wherever you need. And if you have any questions, I know I covered a ton of information. Uh, if you do have any questions, write a comment. I am more than willing to help you out. And if you need an extended conversation, you can always uh, go onto Instagram and um, direct message me there. And I will work with you through whatever issues you're having. Or if your plant looks good and you want to send a picture, uh, I love seeing that as well. So thank you so much. If you've enjoyed this video, if you've been here uh, this entire time, thank you for watching it in its entirety. I hope it helps. And if you would, and if it's not too tacky for me to ask, if you could go ahead and share this video and other videos so we can get the word out uh, as, to as many people as we can. As I've said before, the goal at CHM Carnivores is to get the word out to as many people as possible about these amazing plants and to garner interest and to push them back away from extinction. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and a wonderful week. I'll see you soon.